I'm building a tiny vacation home on wheels. Shut up and sit down. back at Robert's flooring and this is the floor sample that I've been carrying around for the last month or so so now that I have the van I'm gonna go in and see if they can get these floors I have not been able to find this exact flooring anywhere and this is exactly the one that I want so. I was trying to go to all the mom and pop stores and in Houston I guess nobody understands building a tiny home or building a cargo van so I ended up coming to this massive like discount floor place called floor and decor they don't have any sinks that are metal um, I haven't looked at countertops but I'm gonna go to a guy for that like across town but this is my floor and it's about actually the same price point as the other uh, floor that I was going to get and it's actually been discontinued so I just got the last batch that they have so that's pretty cool this is a big day in van build world this is preliminary flooring day <laughs> is the flooring that I ended up getting from Floor and Decor which is one of those like gigantic big box flooring stores. Uh, the price point was actually about the same maybe just a little bit cheaper and they also had a uh, floor pad which will go under the floor. Um, what I'm going to do today the day before I do the flooring is I need to take the rubber floor out and clean under it and then put the rubber floor back and I'm actually going to use it as a template um, so I know how to cut the wood uh, tomorrow in the Home Depot parking lot. <laughs> so uh, I'm hoping that I can just very quickly cut out one wheel well, another wheel well, and the entryway. Um, that's literally all I have to cut out and at least get it as close as possible. If I have any like extra little gaps and stuff, I'm sure I could put like a floor mat or something. Uh, not too worried, but I do need to get that tomorrow. So... I'm hoping that the floor width will actually fit through the door. That's another concern. Um, I always wonder how people do the low roof cargo van builds when they have to put an entire floor in. I guess you just kind of, I don't know, contort your way in with it <laughs> and hopefully you hope it fits. But I think the, the door is um, taller than the width of the, well, I have a tape measure. I should just measure it <laughs> instead of me trying to eyeball it and say, oh, I think it's exactly the same. Um, anyway, so yesterday I cleaned everything and it looks spectacular, even a day later. So now I've got to tackle what's under the floor, which I'm a little worried about because there is some kind of mud and stuff in the entryways. So what I need to do is basically measure where I'm going to cut right here and then uh, cut across horizontally and then take out the floor, which should just come right out, and then clean under it and then put the floor back so I can go to Home Depot tomorrow. Okay, this is flooring day. So I have this roller masking tape and masking tape will be your best friend during a van build. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mark across where I want to cut um, the, uh, the flooring. And because I stupidly bought an X-Acto knife that doesn't have a blade, stupidly, I'm going to use my handy dandy knife that I use to get out of a flooded car, which is what everybody should have in their vehicles is one of these. Um, it actually has, it's a very sharp knife, um, but it actually has a notch on the end that you can smash a window if your vehicle is in the water. So it's always good to have one of these. It also has a, a thing that you can like slice your um, seatbelt and get out of a sticky situation. So I'm going to come over here and basically 
mark from this edge about here. I'm going to leave a little bit of the flooring um, because I want to, you know, just a little bit of the flooring. I don't want to go wall to wall on the end. And then I'm going to mark down here. And then just there. Okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be enough. Um, well, it doesn't have to be perfect. Nothing has to be perfect in a band So, Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut hopefully be able to cut. I don't think this will cut very well. There we go. So this will probably take a little bit. So I'm going to put this on a time lapse and speed it up a little. Okay, so I've cut all the way across and underneath is actually not that bad. I actually have to cut some of this, I don't know, I've got to pull all of this um, like a mat like mattress pad or something, but it's not that dirty. Uh, now the pen. <laughs> uh, it's just, you know, there's no rust or anything. So um, I'm going to just keep cutting and just get all of this, all of this padding out. I mean, I can just pull it, yeah, I can just pull it out. So that's, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to keep doing this and I've got to work around the edges. This side is not attached, so that's good, but this is kind of under the, um, the entryway. And then in the back of the whole thing should just come out. So it might take me a little while, but let's, uh, let's keep working. <laughs> that I took out and it literally only took me 10 minutes to remove the floor and I'm just going to roll that back up and take it with me to Home Depot tomorrow. This is what the floor looks like. It is literally perfect. No rust. I even took off the, uh, the bit here that I'm going to clean. Um, I need to know all of the uh, names for these pieces. I got to learn these because I took the thing that's here and the thing that's there and did that thing over there. So uh, apologies for like zero technical uh, ability when it comes to naming um, bits of cars, which I should know because I used to work for Toyota and Honda, um, but it was a while ago and I think I forgot. Um, it's like, I just like the red bit. Anyway, so this is what the floor looks like. As you can see, I cleaned yesterday and it's funny. It's like the floor is as clean as I got the walls. That's really crazy. So what I'm going to do is just kind of use my dustpan and sweep and then just do a quick uh, once over with the Clorox. Uh, and I think that's all I need to do. I just need to get rid of a few extra little pieces of the uh, mattress pad. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, I think installing the floor is gonna be super easy tomorrow. So what I'm gonna do is put down this uh, noise deadening uh, insulation, which is like super thin. And then after that, I'm gonna put down the quarter inch plywood, which I need to cut out to using the floor as a template. And then I need to put the blue, which is buried somewhere under the floor, uh, the blue um, floor pad and then these, this flooring. And I don't know how many panels are in each one. Each one is about 19 or 20 square feet. So I'm probably not even going to use all of these. Um, I think each one is about half the width of the floor or half the length of the floor. So. I'm guessing I'm probably only going to use three of these and I can take the other one back. So that'll save me 50 bucks. Um, but like I said, I don't need to, um, 
I maybe have to remove these little uh, latches, but honestly, I don't think I do because uh, they're going to go under the cabinet. So um, that one's going to go under the fridge, and this one's going to go under the sink. And this one, I think I have to remove this one. I think that's the only one. I just don't want it to rust if it goes all the way through. So maybe I just take it off and then, or maybe not. I don't know. It's under the, um, it's lower than the, the level. And that's the thing is the plywood goes on top of these little um, ruts, I guess. So if this is under it and doesn't affect the actual balance of the floor, then I can just leave it. And then these little struts here or little notches or whatever they're called, um, I don't need to do anything. This one I don't need to remove because it's below the, uh, it's below that, the rung. I don't even know what, what they're called, the little divots, I guess. But yeah, this is, uh, just cannot get over like how great this looks. I need to get rid of this weird thing down here. I have no idea what this is for. Um, but I might leave it for nostalgia. And then I would like to get rid of these little hook things. But I can do that later when I'm doing the, uh, the paneling. So yeah, just a little bit of cleaning and then um, we should be ready to go with the floor tomorrow. It's exciting! Most of the dirt out, I just have to use a small, uh, I don't know, like dish scrubber brush uh, to get around the corners and then just wipe this down. <laughs> Look at the, uh, the uh, bump, rear bumper, it's just a mess. And of course the wind is blowing everything back in to my vehicle. Why are you doing this wind? Stop being windy, please. <laughs> I'm trying to work here. Um, yeah, it's not that bad. Actually, uh, once I wipe everything down, once I get rid of all this stuff on the end, it's not going to blow back in and then I'll wipe everything down and we should be good. These latches actually don't uh, move, I think, because they've probably never been used. So I'm just trying to scrub around it and get as much of the dirt out as possible. Um, that's pretty much what's left. And then over here, I just need to get these uh, little bits of uh, dirt out and then get rid of this thing, which I can do tomorrow. I need my tools and then just wipe everything down. And uh, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it just has to be enough to uh, keep it somewhat clean. I've been scrubbing for the last hour and a half and it's actually starting to get dark. And I had to put my little uh, hockey puck light, which is actually what my lighting will be in the van and I will show you that a little bit later when I do the electrical series. Um, basically it's a little magnetic hockey puck that is USB chargeable, rechargeable and I have uh, actually 10 of them <laughs> and they last about three days and they're really bright as you see just one of them pretty much lights up the entire cargo van. I just cleaned the whole floor. It looks amazing. It is so ready to go. And uh, tomorrow morning, I will go get the piece of wood cut and then come back and basically just lay the floor. And I think it'll be pretty much an all day thing. Um, it shouldn't take me that long. Just cutting the wood is gonna be the hardest bit. Uh, Home Depot and Lowe's will cut the wood for you, but to cut around the pieces is gonna be the hardest bit. So I also have to roll up the floor <laughs> and put that back inside. So I'm just gonna clean this last little bit, pack up for the night, and then tomorrow morning, just do another once over with the Swiffer this time, uh, just to make sure everything is clean. Cause it's a little bit chalky from the uh, Clorox wipes, or it might be just the paint coming off. Well, it's not coming off, but it's just chalky just because I'm using a ton of chemicals and my hands are disintegrating. Um, I will be very happy when this part of the build is over and I can just get into decorating all of the fun stuff. So it looks amazing. It looks like a brand new van. Uh, just gonna clean this bit and then put the, um, I don't know, the bumper step back on 
and then lock up for the night and then tomorrow morning get up early and go to Home Depot and get the floor plywood. So very exciting day. It's gonna look more like a home tomorrow. I'm so excited. Oh, and then the insulation comes on Friday and that's gonna be fun to pop all these panels off. And uh, I still have to do a little bit of cleaning up at the top and anywhere behind these panels. But for the most part, the biggest jobs are done. I threw away all of that uh, floor padding. It's now over there in the dumpster. So hopefully, uh, yeah, hopefully it'll be recycled or something. Sorry, landfill. <laughs> Actually, this isn't really that much of a trash job. I'm not really throwing anything away. Um, and everything I'm getting is either organic or somewhat recycled or comes from the earth. So trying to keep it eco-friendly apart from the bit where I'm using chemicals.
started building my van, people on the van life pages said I'll be at Home Depot every five minutes. And I was like, no, I'm just gonna get everything I need one time. I've been there three times this morning. It's okay though, they're really nice. Um, plus I live behind the Home Depot. I can literally sling a dead cat and hit this store. Um, so I just need to go back and get uh, jigsaw blades that are for wood. Um, I have some for metal, but you know, I'm not gonna try to figure, like, <laughs> I don't know, I was like, oh, they might be okay. No, like you need to get the proper tools. So uh, I am heading back to get that. And I'm so thankful I have two vehicles so I can just take my little SUV, which feels like a little go-kart now after driving that big ass bus. <laughs> It's all good. So back again, grab what I need and then head back. This is the floor mat that I removed yesterday from the cargo van. And what I'm gonna do is use it to trace the floor where I need to cut it out. And then I have this jigsaw and uh, these, um, these wood blades. Uh, and then I'm just gonna cut basically, I think one, two, three, four, uh, areas that I'm just going to cut off. So this is the entrance way. This is the wheel well. This is just kind of the back area, um, which actually I, I don't think I have to cut this because it's that weird, um, that weird thing that I'm not sure what it is. So um, I don't know. I may not even need to cut that piece. And then the other wheel well. So I have actually the plywood in three pieces because they don't make a piece that's 106 inches by 66 inches. So uh, I do have to kind of um, add them together. As you see, it's not um, it's not perfectly the width. So it should be pretty easy to fit once I do it. Um, and then after that, uh, I'm going to build the bed frame. So this is the uh, support legs. Uh, these are two by fours, uh, 20, 26 inches. Um, and then, and it's nice because you just buy a big old long piece of wood and you get about three legs out of it and it's $8 a piece. So for the bargain basement price of like 25 bucks, you get a bed frame. This is a little bit more expensive. It was $60 for the uh, three quarter inch plywood. Um, but I need something that can sustain a, a couch bed in case more people sit on it. So that will go on top of that. I'll nail that together, put that in the back of the van. Um, but today it's gonna be flooring and then I will do a separate video on the entire bed installation but I'm going to do both today you know just try to get it done so super cool excited to use power tools um, they sound really cool so here we go this is the floor and this is the um, rubber floor mat so as you see they're pretty much the same size and what I'm going to do is put the rubber floor mat on top of the wood and then I'm going to cut so I think what I'm going to do is on this side I'm going to use the thinner piece to cut the um, to cut the holes or to cut the uh, indents. That way, if I screw it up, I can just go back and get another piece of wood and not have to carry this massive piece. So that's pretty much it. This is going to be the top. I think this will be no. I think this will be the back. Okay, so it's going to actually be the opposite way. So the um, actually no, that's right. Okay, yeah. So that's the van. And this is the uh, the garage. That way I can just cut that little piece out in the corner and then cut the indents and then I have to cut the other wheel well out of the big piece. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, and then the uh, floor will fit nicely on top of it and we should be good to go. Okay, the whole thing just blew away. That's not good. All right, I gotta go chase off to the floor now. It's like somewhere over there in the corner. are traced uh, they look very similar to when Harriet used to draw on the walls so uh, very familiar with this look uh, basically just you know it doesn't have to be perfect it's just basically the uh, floor uh, so yeah so doing that and it's so windy today everything's blowing everywhere doors are closing um, so what I'm gonna do is use the flooring 
to put the uh, thin piece on and then use a jigsaw to cut. Um, that way I'm low to the ground. I was going to buy horse like those horses uh, that you can put uh, wood on, but uh, this is really only the cut, the only cutting I'm doing basically. So, <laughs> you know, this is it. Uh, and then when I do the, um, the bigger piece, I'll just put all four uh, containers of flooring uh, to hold it in place and then just cut the last piece. So we're going to cut now and hopefully uh, I won't lose a finger. So we'll see. Fun. All right, we're good. I got three more to do. Right, we got those two pieces cut and now I've just got to cut one more and then a little corner piece and we should be done. Okay, now we're ready to install the floor. Yay, it's a big day. So all the pieces are cut out. That was super easy. I think I got a splinter in my eye, but that's fine. Um, so this is what I'm putting down first. It's sound deadening, uh, sticky back foam. And that's just gonna go down underneath the plywood. And then the plywood's gonna go down on top of that. And then this uh, floor pad, I guess, will go on top of it. And then finally the floor uh, panels. And the nice thing is you can just use an X-Acto knife and just slice and break the, um, the pieces to fit. Uh, I'm probably not gonna cut around. If I do, I'll have to get the jigsaw back out. Uh, but that was fun. <laughs> that was super fun, I like that. Um, so anyway, so yeah, this is super easy to install. It just locks together. Uh, and hopefully um, I can take one of these back. I don't think I'm gonna use all of them, but we'll see. So. Um, that's the thing about building a tiny home is you only need a little bit of everything and you're always left over with like an amount that nobody needs so uh, yeah if anyone's building a tiny home on a motorcycle I'm sure I have enough pieces for you I got like little pieces of wood left over anyway so I'm gonna install this now and then uh, that should probably not take too long like I said it just sticks to the floor and I've cleaned the floor like crazy and we should be good to go super nice obviously the edges I'll go back and add those pieces but this is really easy to install and you just step on it push it down um, probably gonna use probably about half of the other container but yeah this is really easy and uh, hopefully we'll drown out a little bit of the sound so this is what one of these boxes covers and mine is a Nissan NV 2500 cargo van so it's a smaller wheelbase uh, probably the same as like a 124 um, Mercedes Sprinter or a small ProMaster. Um, so obviously I need a second box. I still have to do all the edges over here and then this last end. And things are blowing around outside. That's weird. Let me close this door here. As you can see, uh, I need to kind of fill in all the gaps a little bit. 
So I do need a second box. Uh, obviously put a strip over here, kind of line this over here, and then uh, fill this bit in and then over here, uh, add uh, the extra bits here. And then what I'll do is I'll use this also to cover the uh, wheelbase um, before I do the insulation. And then I'm gonna cover it again with automotive, um, like automotive carpet, I guess, that you can get. It's kind of like when you do um, uh, subwoofers, <laughs> you know, that kind of gray material. This will go under the bed frame, so I'm not really bothered. I'm done with the sound deadening. And it looks amazing. Oh, it looks so pretty. So now I'm gonna put the wood down, which is over here. And then we're gonna start putting the pieces of um, flooring. Actually, no, there's the glue mat and then the flooring. Now make sure I do it in the right order. And then after that, we're gonna put the bed front. It is really windy today. It's super windy, but it's nice and cold, so that's good. guys I just built my first floor look at that oh it fits perfectly oh and I was actually able to use the jigsaw thing oh my god oh it's coming along I'm so happy I needed to get a tapping block, this adhesive, and a rubber mallet. And what I'm going to do is I have to stagger the um, the floorboards and then glue the tongue and groove, and then use the tapping block to make sure that it's secure. And just keep repeating that until the floor is installed. So super easy, um, just a little bit of you know manual labor. So uh, just you know glue and repeat, pretty much. something at the back of the van where the floor ends. Uh, I haven't decided yet if I'm doing rubber flooring or some sticky back carpet. Probably sticky back carpet because it's easy. Um, so these are two different types. I'm not entirely sure. Actually three different types. What a quarter round T-mold and reducer are. They all look a little bit different in the back. So I completed the installation of the floor and it looks spectacular. It's a little messy obviously with the glue so yesterday I just put it kind of like not right <laughs> um, because I just wanted to see how it would look and make sure that I had enough before I committed uh, to this flooring because it was discontinued so the worst thing is you know you buy discontinued flooring and then you realize you and you know you need an extra pallet of it or something so I think it looks great uh, I staggered it uh, at uh, 24 inches uh, like two feet so I think that's sturdy enough I just need to let it kind of you know the glue to dry settle a little bit then I'll wipe it down make it look pretty I need to find a solution for the entryway um, obviously that's my most heavily trafficked area so I need to figure out 
how to stop that one pallet from moving over time, uh, that one floorboard. So um, there's a couple of solutions for that. I could build kind of like a, a stepway over the uh, rubber entryway. Uh, maybe, you know, glue it down a little bit further. Maybe put something to block it. I don't know, we'll figure it out. I'll look on YouTube. Um, I also need to make sure that the wheel base doesn't get damaged by the floor. So I left like a very, very small gap. Um, I probably should have uh, wrapped it with the um, automotive, what is it, the automotive uh, sound editing stuff, which I need to go back to my storage unit and get that so that I can do that today, just to be sure. Uh, also kind of test drive the floor, make sure it doesn't fall apart when I'm driving. Um, I do have some extra gaps over here that I need to fill. So those are pretty easy. So I'm just gonna cut a thinner piece here, cut a very thinner piece here. And you have to make sure that you're always doing the tongue and groove uh, in the right way. So I've ended up with an extra bunch of pieces, which I could use at the end over here. Uh, I'm gonna have to figure that bit out. So uh, now I've got this big gap at the end. And uh, since there's no tongue or groove on these uh, every other piece because of the way it was cut, um, I need to uh, figure out how I'm going to attach. So I might be able to do this. I might be able just to attach the floor here, but I might get some gaps. Uh, the only problem is this piece comes out a little bit too far. <laughs> So, I don't know, I've got to figure out a solution. I might just end up carpeting or putting some rubber flooring down here. That might be better because it is the garage. Um, I do have these mats that might work. So actually, let me undo the mat and then I'll see if it works. So I got these rubber stairwell mats. They're commercial grade and that might actually work. Um, what I might do is put an extra piece of wood across here at the bottom and then just have this kind of in between. That's one solution. Um, I still have this weird, I don't know what this is, this weird metal thing right here. It's very strange. I have no idea what that's for. And then these weird bolts that I need to take out. I just want to show you how easy it is to cut. Uh, it's a little harder to cut sideways, so I'm cutting this piece in half. Um, so what you do is you basically get your box cutter and you get one of these... Um, I don't know, is this called a protractor? I don't know, it's been like 27 years since I took a geometry class. Uh, I probably should take another one. Uh, anyway, so what you do is you just slice it and then you snap it like that. And then you turn it over and you'll see it's kind of got a line now and you just go back with your protractor thing that might not be a protractor. And then you get your um, box cutter and you just cut um, again and snap it in half so you have two pieces. So another late night, actually it's not late, it's like six o'clock in the evening, but it's already dark. So before I go to bed, what I'm going to do is take this sticky back uh, sound deadening material that I used under the floor and put it around the wheel well right here. And then in the back, I'm going to take this industrial grade, restaurant grade um, uh, floor mat and I'm going to put it, I'm going to cut it and put it across the whole back of the van and uh, stick it down with this sticky rug tape. So that's what I'm going to do tonight. Uh, the floor is looking pretty good. It looks like the glue is dried. Um, apologies for the light. I'm just using this little hockey puck light over the top. So not too flattering, you know. Um, it's okay. Um, so yeah, so I'm just going to do that and then I think I'll be done with the floor uh, until I'm ready to build the rest of the, the house out. So looking pretty good so far no issues that I can see except for just the entryway I need to figure out a way to reinforce that so every time I step up it's not going to come loose um, but yeah that's pretty much it so exciting two days of uh, sorting out how to learn how to do a floor so I'm pretty happy so let's finish this up and then we'll be uh, ready to go with um, hopefully the strapping tomorrow I don't have much time tomorrow just a few hours 
Um, but I'm going to do the strapping and then the insulation's arriving in about three days. So yeah, home stretch, kind of. <laughs> Okay, so that wheel well is done and then it will be covered with some insulation and I might box it in I have to see how the bed platform is going to look and then over on this side that one looks very nice so I think we're good to go and it's pretty pliable you can stretch this a little bit to fit over I had to cut obviously um, in order to kind of fold it in but yeah I kind of wedged it down here in between the floorboard on this side I just stuck it to the plywood. Plywood's not going to be moving anytime soon, so not worried about that. Just more worried about the uh, floorboards hitting the um, hitting the metal. So that's pretty protected. I think we're good. So my solution to do these uh, mats at the end, um, I came up with another idea. It's it's funny. I've changed my mind like nine times for the end of it here. I actually got these self stick carpets. Uh, these carpet tiles. It's thirty dollars for a pack of ten and it covers, I think, 10 square feet. So maybe more than that. Um, but anyway, so this is fine. I'm just gonna stick down maybe four of them, four or five of them, um, and then just keep the rest. So every time this gets grimy from things going in the garage, I can just switch it out. And then I'll keep these mats too. Um, it's always good to reinforce high traffic areas. So I'm gonna stick these down and then we should be good. I think I'm done completely with the floor. And then next we're doing insulation. Well, that's awesome. It fits perfectly in that space. And I assume it's going to fit perfectly in that space with that weird, I'm gonna have to cut around for that weird thing that I still don't know what this is. If anyone knows, leave it in the comments, because I have no idea why this is even in here. Uh, I'm not going to take it out because then the holes will rust. So I'll just leave it. Anyway, so I'm going to continue with this and hopefully it will look pretty good. Okay, that looks really nice. That's so much better. And it's pretty solid. It's not moving anywhere anytime soon. And for this, I just covered it so it's not going to flap around, make a noise. So we're done. Floor is done. That is a wrap. Look how messy it is now. Anyway, I'm super happy and just excited for the next step.